Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to ForeFlight Fundamentals. My name is Ryan McBride. I'm the head of community at ForeFlight. Uh, can everyone hear me OK in the back? Volume good? Great. Um, today's agenda, we're going to talk a little bit about ForeFlight Mobile. Uh, I'll give you a little background on the company, where we came from, where we're going. Talk about some of the different subscription levels in ForeFlight Mobile. There's three different subscription levels. Each comes with its unique set of features, so we'll walk through what the differences are there. And then we're going to dive into the app. We're going to walk through all the core areas of ForeFlight Mobile one by one, show you the different types of information and capabilities that are available in the product. At the end of the presentation, I'm going to uh, give you some information on how to learn more, how to get support from ForeFlight, or deepen your knowledge of, of using the product. And then we'll have time for a Q&A uh, at the end as well. So if you have any questions that come up as I'm presenting through things, uh, please hold on to that question. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll have, we'll have plenty of time to answer. So ForeFlight. ForeFlight was founded in 2007 by Tyson Weiss and Jason Miller. Tyson and Jason met online through some aviation discussion forums. And uh, 2007 was actually a pretty special year because that's the year that Apple introduced the iPhone. And Tyson and Jason immediately saw the potential the iPhone might have to improve workflows for pilots. Um, the company really started taking off, though, in 2010. That's when the iPad was introduced. Uh, and we've been releasing at a breakneck pace uh, since then. We're headquartered in Austin, Texas, though we do have offices in Houston, Portland, Maine, and Odense, Denmark as well. Um, we're a little over 500 employees now. Uh, we've grown considerably. When I joined back in 2013, we were about 20 people uh, sitting in a little co-working space in Austin. We're over 500 globally now. Uh, over a third of our, our employees are pilots. Uh, so we use our own product, we fly with it, we come up with ideas, and of course we get a lot of ideas from our phenomenal customer base as well. In 2019, Boeing acquired uh, ForeFlight, and we now operate as an independent subsidiary of Boeing Global Services. So in a nutshell, what we do at ForeFlight is we build next generation integrated planning and flight deck applications that are designed to bring high utility, productivity, and enhance pilot safety. And we serve a lot more than general aviation. Obviously, at a show like this at Sun and Fun, we're focused on talking to our GA customers, and GA customers of always been the base uh, of, of our customer base and, and what we do. Uh, we're all GA pilots ourselves at the company. We serve a lot more markets than that uh, these days, business aviation, commercial, and defense as well. Uh, you know, we build mission-critical mission products at ForeFlight. We take that very seriously. We know that um, people are depending on our application uh, to work uh, seamlessly uh, and consistently. Um, and so we've structured our team in a way to reduce risk and improve uh, pilot decision making. And safety is definitely our foremost priority at ForeFlight. A couple things we've done um, to improve the safety of the product over time is we've invested heavily in quality assurance. So our quality assurance team, the team of engineers within the company that tests new features, uh, is actually one of our largest teams at the company. Um, we test the product ourselves in flight, in simulators. We also have real world testing done by a global group of customers we call our alpha group. These are individuals who go out and test new features and provide feedback. And one thing that's really important to us is collaboration, right? So coming to events like this, talking to customers, understanding what's working for them, what's not, but also collaboration with uh, other partners in the industry, uh, regulatory bodies, different organizations. Um, and we have been doing that for a while, and we're going to continue to do it. Before I move on to the presentation, I just wanted to highlight uh, we're here on Friday, the fundamentals presentation. We do have one more tomorrow, same place, right here at 11 a.m., and that's our power users uh, uh, presentation. So that's the advanced course. So um, if you want to learn more about ForeFlight beyond what we're going to discuss today, I'd highly recommend checking out that power users course tomorrow. For attending today, you're eligible to receive FAA WINGS credit. You can scan that QR code to get WINGS credit, and this is the URL up here, bit.ly slash WINGS credit. Um, it'll, we'll just ask you to enter your name and the, the course you attended, and we'll apply the credit to the FAA WINGS program. Also, this presentation, as well as all the presentations we give at ForeFlight, are available to watch online. ForeFlight.com slash videos, you can check that out. Um, it's free to watch everything we do. Uh, when we put out a new feature or a new release, we create a video that walks you through all the things in that release. So um, you can ac absolutely read about it in our press release or in our pilot's guide, but uh, you can also watch a video on it. And so this course will be recorded on the video page after the show. So what is an electronic flight bag? Uh, for anyone who's new to for flight or new to EFBs in general, an electronic flight bag is designed to take all the paper products that a pilot traditionally has needed to purchase and update and consolidate those things into one single application. Um, 
lots of different types of information available in the product. Airport information, VFR and IFR maps, charts, procedures, documents. Uh, you can upload your POH into ForeFlight, have it with you on your iPad. ForeFlight has an integrated logbook that will automatically track your flights for you, uh, give you up-to-date currency information, run reports. Of course, it has very comprehensive flight planning capability, uh, the ability to look at uh, weather imagery uh, across the world, filing and briefing VFR and IFR flight plans, a feature we call Scratchpad, which allows you to take notes directly on your iPad screen with a stylus or uh, with your finger, and a whole lot more. We're gonna walk through each of these items today, but before I do, for anyone who doesn't yet have an iPad or maybe is considering upgrading or purchasing a new iPad, I want to talk a little bit about our iPad recommendations. The latest iPad models available from Apple are these, from the mini on the small side to the 12.9 inch iPad Pro on the large size. Um, the good news is that ForeFlight runs exactly the same on every iPad. Um, so whatever iPad you choose is totally up to you. It depends on what you're most comfortable with. I mostly fly in a Cessna 172 and I fly with a kneeboard and so I prefer the iPad mini, a lot of pilots do, uh, but the iPad and the iPad Air are, are popular models as well. I wanna point out though that regardless of which size of iPad you choose, you will have two options for each iPad, Wi-Fi only or Wi-Fi plus cellular. And we recommend you get the Wi-Fi plus cellular model. And the reason is, when Apple manufactures the iPads, they put the GPS chip on the same chip that the cellular receiver is on. It's manufactured as one component. And so the cellular receiver is required if, you're, if you want to receive a, a GPS connection. So if you don't wanna have to go out and buy an external GPS, you wanna see your aircraft position within ForeFlight without connecting to anything else, we recommend you get the cellular model. You don't have to sign up for cellular service, you don't have to sign up with any provider for that, um, but you do need the cellular model because that's the chip that has the GPS on it. We do recommend at least 128 gigabytes of storage, that's more than enough to fit everything ForeFlight has to offer in terms of downloads, charts, weather, et cetera, plus plenty of room for photos, videos, other applications. Some of the most common uh, models that we see our customers use are the smaller size of the iPad Pro, the 11 inch, the iPad Air, which is the middle size, and then the iPad Mini. We were very, very excited to see Apple actually uh, last year updated the, the iPad Mini. We were been waiting for that for a while, so we're on the iPad Mini 6 now. It's super fast, has a great screen, um, and is my, my personal favorite model. When you download ForeFlight on your device, you can actually run it on multiple devices at the same time for one subscription. So you can have two iPads and an iPhone, or one iPad and two iPhones. So three devices, um, not three total iPads, either two iPads and an iPhone, or one iPad and two iPhones. And you can install that with your existing subscription uh, on any of those devices. Of course, ForeFlight runs on your home computer as well. Has anyone here logged into ForeFlight.com before, done any flight planning on ForeFlight.com? If you haven't, I highly recommend you check it out. You just go to ForeFlight.com, log in. It's all the flight planning capability you'd expect to find in the mobile app, but you can do it on your home computer. There's no software to install. It's all in a web browser. Um, and everything you do on the computer will synchronize automatically to your device, iPad or iPhone. So really, really seamless way uh, to flight plan. Okay, downloading and updating for, for flight. If you haven't downloaded ForeFlight before, you can go into the Apple App Store, search for ForeFlight. You'll see the ForeFlight App Store page, and you can tap this download button here. If you have already downloaded it and you need to update it, you go to the same place, App Store, tap the update button, and it'll get the latest version for you. When you first open up ForeFlight, you can, it'll default to a trial mode, so you can use it free for 30 days. Um, and if you have any questions during that trial or at any point uh, when you're using ForeFlight, just remember that our pilot support team is standing by. They're all pilots, uh, instrument rated, some are CFIs, uh, and they're all ForeFlight experts. Uh, so team at ForeFlight.com is the best way to contact us. So ForeFlight does require a subscription after 30 days. There are three subscription levels available in the product, Basic Plus, Pro Plus, and Performance Plus. Basic Plus is all the essentials, so all of your charts, uh, weather information, flight planning capability, uh, and that's $120 a year, so $10 a month. The Pro Plus subscription is our most popular. That's everything in the Basic Subscription Plus. Crucially, it adds what are called geo-referenced plates, so you can see your own ship position on top of an instrument approach plate or on top of a taxi diagram. Really, really useful for situational awareness. The Pro Plus plan also includes some hazard avoidance features, like our hazard visor, which shows you a top-down view of the terrain and obstacles around you as you fly, and it'll actually morph and change the map and alert you proactively based on your GPS position and altitude. It also includes synthetic vision, which is the same information but visualized in 3D, looking forward from the nose of the aircraft. 
And then our top tier subscription is Performance Plus, which includes everything in Pro, plus pre-built aircraft performance profiles. So we've worked with every aircraft OEM, every manufacturer, to get all the performance data from that aircraft for, for every variant of that aircraft. And those performance profiles are built into the application. This means you get much, much higher accuracy calculations for time and route, fuel burn, et cetera. We also have added some 3D visualization features to Performance Plus, so you can visualize any airport environment in 3D. You can actually plan your entire flight and fly it virtually in ForeFlight on your iPad before you go flying, which is a great way to brief what that flight's gonna uh, look like. We've also added takeoff and landing performance to our Performance Plus subscription. So based on your aircraft's run runway performance, we can give you takeoff and landing speeds, distances, et cetera. A uh, couple show specials this week. If you upgrade to Pro Plus or purchase it new for the first time, we're offering 20% off. Similarly with Performance Plus, 20% off a new purchase or an upgrade. Or if you're already on Performance Plus, we're offering 10% off if you renew that at the show this week. We're in Hangar C and you can do that there. Also our ADS-B in Receiver Sentry Plus is 10% off this week in Hangar C. Uh, who here flies with ADS-B in? Cool, quite a few people. Uh, ADS being very, very useful, seeing traffic, weather, et cetera, uh, directly in ForeFlight on your iPad. Sentry Plus adds a variety of additional cool features. It has a carbon monoxide filter, filter feature built in that will automatically alert you to CO levels. It has a G meter, so it'll track your G load throughout the flight. It has an 18 hour battery, which is pretty incredible. And it has this OLED screen, so you can check things like uh, battery life reception, et cetera. Okay. Let's talk about the app, ForeFlight Mobile. So when you open up ForeFlight for the first time, you're gonna see a view that looks like this. ForeFlight runs the same in portrait, meaning this orientation, as well as landscape, the wide orientation. So you can adjust ForeFlight portrait or landscape depending on what's most comfortable for you. I think most customers probably fly in portrait uh, and they have it on their knee or up on their, on their windshield, um, but it works perfectly well in landscape as well. This is the airport's view. The airport's view is the default view when you open up ForeFlight for the very first time. And in the airport's view, we can look up a ton of different information about any airport in the world. In order to look up information for a given airport, we can use the search field in the top right-hand corner of the screen. So I can tap on the search field, and I get a little search box, and I can start typing, and I can type the airport code that I'm interested in, or if I don't know the code, I can type the name of the airport or the city that the airport is in, and ForeFlight will automatically suggest results that it thinks you're trying to find. And in this case, I've entered JFK, and so I can select JFK from my list of search results. And my view is refreshed with the JFK International Airport information. There's two different sections to the airport view, the top view, which is a summary, and the bottom view, which allows me to dive deeper into specific information about the airport. In the summary view at the top, we can see a little preview, a thumbnail diagram of the airport, uh, the taxi diagram. We can see the airport's code, name, city, state, country, latitude, longitude, its sunrise and sunset times in airport time zone. We can see the latest weather based on the most current METAR report. Uh, in this case, it was marginal VFR. Uh, we can see the field elevation, pattern altitude. If there's different pattern altitudes for different types of aircraft, you can tap that little arrow next to pattern altitude. It'll show you all the different pattern altitudes that are available fuel and procedures that are available, common frequencies in use at that airport. Um, we can see in this example, if you look at the clearance, on the right-hand side, the clearance frequency, 13505, has a little badge next to it that says PDC, pre-departure clearance. That means that a pre-departure clearance is available at this airport, and if you're on the Performance Plus subscription and you're filing IFR and you're filing out of JFK, you will actually get your pre-departure clearance sent directly to you in ForeFlight Mobile, which is really handy. At the bottom of the screen, we have a bunch of tabs, and these tabs allow us to dive deeper into information about this airport. So right now we're looking at weather, and I can see a variety of different uh, weather products about this airport. So we're looking at the METAR right now, we can see it's marginal, uh, it was updated 46 minutes ago. Um, we see the raw METAR, and then we see the translated version as well. We do this for all of the weather products, so same for the terminal forecast, same for MOS, which stands for Model Output Statistics, which is an automated forecast model. Um, we're always gonna show you the raw product and then give you a translated as well. Under the info tab, I can look up general information about this airport, like frequencies. And so I can see two columns here. I have categories of frequencies and then all the frequencies that belong to that category. So if I wanted to look up approach frequencies for JFK, I would select approach, tap on it, and then in the right-hand column, I see all of my approach frequencies listed. The runway 
tab is all the runway information you'd expect to find in the chart supplement book, the airport facility directory. Uh, and you can tap on different runways to see different information, slopes, distances, et cetera, lighting, whatever. Um, but I can, we've also augmented this. So I can see, uh, based on the current METAR, what the crosswind, headwind, or tailwind component is for any runway. And you can see we've highlighted based on the METAR and the runway direction, which, are, which runways are favored right now based on the winds. I can tap on the procedure tab to look at any procedure for the airport. So this is taxi diagrams under the airport category. Uh, if I wanted to pull up a taxi diagram, I simply tap on it and it opens it up like this. Um, there is a special feature in ForeFlight called Plates on Maps. Uh, if you are a Pro Plus subscriber or above, you can use this button up in the top called the Send To menu. Wherever you see this icon, you'll see this icon in a variety of different places in the app. It's like a little box with an arrow coming out of the top of it. That's the Send To menu. And this is telling you, hey, the thing you're looking at right now, you can visualize this somewhere else, or you can send this content somewhere else to look at it in a different context. So I'm gonna tap on that Send To menu. And if I'm a Pro Plus subscriber or above, I have the ability to send this to the map. And when I do, it takes me over to the Maps tab, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, but it visualizes this procedure, whether it's an instrument procedure or a taxi diagram, whatever, on top of my existing map. And so in this way, I can stack up different levels of information and I'll see my, my own ship position transition from the map onto that, uh, that plate as I'm moving around. Lots of different procedures available here for every airport. The list of procedures you will see here will depend on your subscription level. So in this case, I'm a Jefferson subscriber and so I have access to Jefferson charts. Um, if you're a U.S. customer, at a minimum, you will see four flight content and FAA content. If you are a European customer and a, or have purchased the European chart coverage, you'll see different data providers there. Um, so this will vary depending on your subscription level. Finally, the last tab is NOTAMs. I can go to the NOTAM section and I can see different types of NOTAMs, airport obstacle, TFR, center NOTAMs. If I'm a Jefferson customer, I'll see Jefferson NOTAMs. Um, you can tap in the filter button there to search through different NOTAMs. So if, you're, if you hear about a NOTAM over the radio or something like that and they give you an ID, you can type the ID in there and find that NOTAM and read the full thing. For NOTAMs that have critical information, like something is out of service or a runway is closed or something like that, we will highlight that information in red in the NOTAM. So we'll make it big and bright and bold to draw your attention to it. Two more things I want to talk about on the airport view before we move on. The first is this 3D view button up at the top of the screen. This is available in our Performance Plus subscription. When I tap on 3D view, I get a 3D visualization of the airport. I can pinch, zoom, move around the airport in 3D. I can tap the runway buttons up at the top to put myself on final approach on glide slope for that given runway. I can use the buttons in the bottom right of the screen, the, the sun and the moon, to change the lighting from day to night to see what that airport is going to look like if I was approaching during the day or at night. Super useful feature. That's in our Performance Plus subscription. FBOs, this is available to everybody. If I tap on the FBOs button in the top right, I can see all the businesses that are available at the airport, if they have fuel, what fuel they offer, and what the current prices are. The prices are color-coded based on how expensive that fuel is relative to other airports that are offering the same type of fuel in a, the given area. And so, probably no surprise here that 100 low lead is pretty expensive at JFK. Um, one more button in the top right here, the comments button. This is sort of like Yelp for pilots. So you can go in here and leave comments or read other comments that pilots have left about the experience they had at the airport, tips, tricks, uh, three things, you know, anything to, to, to know about getting into and out of this airport safely. Uh, let's see here, I wanna move on one more tab. So we're at the bottom of the screen now, we're on airports. I'm gonna move one to the right to the Maps tab. So I'll tap on Maps. And the Maps view is where most Customers will spend the majority of their time in ForeFlight. All the maps we look at here are visualized onto a 3D representation of the globe. Right now we're looking at our aeronautical map. As we zoom in, this aeronautical map is dynamic. It's, it's, it's rendered on the fly. It's not a scanned piece of paper, it's a dynamic map. And so different information will fade in. I'll get more detail out of the map as I zoom in and out to different areas. We've included the taxi diagrams as well for every airport in the aeronautical map. So as I zoom into Oshkosh here, for example, I see the full taxi diagram. So this is our aeronautical map, but we can visualize other types of charts on top of this 3D representation of the globe. Um, and we do that using the button in the top left-hand corner of the map view. We call this the layer selector. 
and I'm going to tap on that button, and I get a big menu. And the options you will see in this menu will, again, vary based on the subscription level you have. Um, but there are two columns to this menu. There's a left column, which gives us different chart options, and there's a right column, which gives us different layer options. The difference between a chart and a layer is that the charts in the left-hand column, those make up the base layer of the map. The layers on the right-hand column, that's information you can visualize on top of the chart you've selected. So charts on the bottom, layers on top of the, on top of the charts. Um, I want to show you a couple different examples of charts that are available. So again, the aeronautical map, which I just mentioned, that's the first option in the list. This is our dynamic data-driven map. Um, let's say I wanted to get airport information on the maps view, um, and I have my aeronautical map on. It's fully interactive, so I can just simply tap on anything I see, in this case an airport, and when I do that, ForeFlight will provide me information about the thing I tapped on, and it will also highlight on the map, in a green circle, the thing that I had tapped on. So in this case, I tapped on Detroit Metro, and so I'm seeing all the airport information for Detroit Metro. You'll notice it's the same organization of information that we just looked at in the airports view. So I have info, weather, runway, procedures, notams, it's organized the same way. It's just uh, in a more compact format so I can see it side by side with my map. Uh, I'm gonna close my airport info here and I'm going to look at a different type of chart. Let's look at the aerial map. If I select aerial map, I get a global satellite photography map of the whole planet and as I zoom in, that information, that imagery will become a higher resolution. Um, up at the top of the screen, I'm going to select uh, the, oh, I wanted to point out too, before I move on, you'll notice I've selected aeronautical and I've selected aerial map. So what Forthlight has done is it's taken the, the, the aerial imagery and it's put it on the bottom, and then it's stacked the aeronautical map data on top, right? So I've combined those two things. This is what makes the map view, in my opinion, so powerful, is you can stack up different layers of information depending on whatever you want to see. I'm going to turn the aerial map off, and I'm going to use the search box in the top right-hand corner of the screen, this box right up here, to search for a different airport. Right? We can find airports and get information about them by tapping on them, like we just did for Detroit, or I can just search for them using the search box. And so I'll do that. I'll type K-A-R-B, that's Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor Municipal in Ann Arbor, Michigan, my home state, and we'll select Ann Arbor. And now the map has centered on Ann Arbor Municipal and it's given us the airport information. Let's say I wanted to fly direct to this airport. I can do that by tapping the direct to button at the top of the screen. And when I do that, ForeFlight will plot a direct route between my current position, my lat long, and that airport. Up in the top left hand corner, there is an FPL button. FPL stands for flight plan. And this is where we can see our current flight plan and make changes to it. So we just planned a direct route, uh, and when I took this screenshot, I think I was located up in Oshkosh. So um, it had plotted my route directly from my position in Oshkosh to Ann Arbor. Uh, but I can change this. These little bubbles, these little route bubbles, we call them, in the flight plan drawer, they're interactive. You can tap on them. You can modify information about them. And so I'll select the bubble for my lat lawn, my current position, and I will select replace. I'm going to change this waypoint. And when I do that, I will enter in the box on, on the screen, I will enter a different waypoint. I'll say K-O-S-H for Oshkosh, and then I'll select Replace. And when I do that, my lat lawn is replaced with the actual airport identifier. Everything I do in the flight plan drawer is represented on the map. And every change I make on the map is represented in the flight plan drawer, so they're linked. Of course, I can enter other waypoints for my route just by tapping anywhere in the black box in the flight plan drawer. And when I do that, I get a keyboard and I get a cursor up at the top. And I can just type different waypoints for my route. And we type waypoints like we would type words in a sentence, right? So a waypoint identifier, spacebar, waypoint identifier, spacebar, just like you're typing a sentence. There's a, a bunch of other information that you can provide in the flight plan drawer in order to get accurate time and fuel estimates for the route you're planning. This button here, in this case it has a tail number in it, 2516 Bravo, this is where I can enter aircraft in information. I can tell ForeFlight about the type of aircraft that I'm flying. If you tap on that aircraft button, you'll see a list of aircraft you've planned with before, or if you haven't planned with an aircraft before, you can tap the plus button to add a new aircraft. 
When you add a new aircraft to the four flight system, there are only two fields required, a tail number, which is a unique identifier for that aircraft, and the type code. The type code is really useful uh, to input because based on the type code, ForeFlight can pre-fill a bunch of information about your aircraft for you, your ICAO flight planning codes, basic performance information, et cetera. So this will save you a lot of time so you don't have to enter that manually later. The button below the aircraft tail number is the performance button. So this is where we tell ForeFlight a little bit about the performance characteristics of our aircraft. The more information we can enter into the system, the better our estimates will be for time and fuel when ForeFlight calculates the route. At the bottom there, uh, underneath the performance button, is our altitude advisor. So this is where we can select an altitude to fly at. Um, if you open up the altitude advisor, ForeFlight will show you the optimum altitude to fly for the route that you've planned. Uh, and it'll give you average headwind or tailwind components across the whole route for every altitude. It's a great visual way to kind of pick the best altitude to fly at for a route. On the right-hand side is an ETD button, so this is just uh, an ability to tell ForeFlight roughly what time you expect to depart, and based on your ETD, it'll use that to calculate your ETA. In this case, I haven't set an ETD yet, and that's why my ETA at the bottom of the flight plan drawer is blank. As soon as I set an ETD, it'll run the calculations and generate an ETA. The routes button is really handy as well. This allows you to see recently ATC cleared routes between your departure and destination airport you're planning. So if you wanna see what other people are filing or flying, you can do that. If you're on the Performance Plus subscription, For ForeFlight can actually generate an optimized route for you. It's what we call the recommended route. This is the most time and fuel efficient way to get from departure to destination based on the current wind forecast and your specific aircraft's performance capabilities. Procedure button. I want to tap on this and show you something pretty cool. Um, this is one of my favorite features in ForeFlight. This is a way to visualize uh, both VFR and IFR procedures into and out of any airport in the world. Um, in this case, let's say we're going to fly VFR to Ann Arbor, and um, maybe I'm going to enter the traffic pattern there, and I just want to visualize what my traffic pattern entry is going to look like as I approach the airport. I can select traffic pattern, and uh, ForeFlight asks me, which runway are you expecting to land on? And um, right now, based on the METAR, it's telling me that runway six is preferred, so I'll select runway six. And then it says, okay, here's a, a bunch of standard traffic pattern entries. Um, and again, based on the wind, um, what the best entry might be. Um, I'm going to select the 45 to left traffic, 45 to the downwind, so I'll select that. And you'll see on the right-hand side here, I have a visualization of what that traffic pattern entry might look like, along with my traffic pattern altitude highlighted, um, TPA there as I enter the downwind. Um, if I'm happy with that, I can tap Add to Route, and it will actually put all those waypoints directly onto my flight plan for me, so I have that just for a little situational awareness as I'm entering the airport environment. You can do the same thing with instrument procedures as well, arrivals, departures, instrument approaches. Um, you can very quickly build up the approach visually using the procedure advisor. I, I love this feature. So we, we made some route changes using, um, using the procedure advisor and using our keyboard, right? And you can see that 45 to runway 06 there has been added to our flight plan. Um, that's one way to, to modify a route on the maps view, but I can also interact directly with the map to modify the route. We call this touch planning. And it's very simple. The idea is I can just take my finger and I can tap and hold on a leg for my route, and I can drag it around. And so I'll drag it over here, and I can set it to a specific latitude or longitude. It'll enter a waypoint for me. I can move it over a waypoint or an airport, um, and it'll add that to my flight plan for me. So I can use the keyboard, or I can just interact directly with the, with the map using touch planning. Before I go flying, let's say I'm happy with this route and I want to go flying now. Before I go, make sure you pack all the data you need for the flight. It's important to have all your charts, weather data, latest NOTAMs, TFRs. We do that using the little suitcase button in the flight plan drawer. It's called Pack. And uh, when I tap on that, ForeFlight will analyze your route. And it'll analyze a 25 nautical mile corridor along the route. And it will uh, tell you, hey, there's a bunch of stuff that's not currently downloaded on your iPad that is relevant to this area that you're flying in. And so I can download uh, fuel prices, NOTAMs, weather, et cetera. I can download all these items by tapping the Pack button at the bottom of the screen. Um, back up in the layer selector, that's that button in the top left-hand corner, um, I wanted to turn on a layer now. So we've only looked at some maps, right? We looked at the aeronautical map, we looked at the, the aerial map, lots of other different options, VFR charts, IFR charts. But I want to look at a layer now. I want to look at radar. And so I'm going to select radar, 
And ForeFlight will take that layer and it'll overlay on whatever my chart selection is. Um, there's a bunch of different types of map layers in ForeFlight Mobile. If I go back to this menu here, you can see tons of different options. Um, Airmets, Sigmets, TFRs, uh, winds, temperatures, speeds, uh, clouds, turbulence, icing, uh, TFRs, surface winds, flight categories. There's a million options in here. Uh, and you can turn on and off different options and set the view up depending on what you're interested in. Um, there is a whole lot more to explore on the Maps tab. I think we probably went through maybe 10% of the things that you can do on the Maps tab. So please visit us in Hangar C. We'll happy to spend as much time as you like going through all the different areas of the Maps view or any, any area of the product. Okay, let's talk about plates. Plates is uh, one tab to the right of Maps along the bottom of the screen. And when I tap on the plates view, I'll get a view that looks like this by default. Um, the plates view is very simply a way to organize procedures. And you can organize instrument procedures into binders. Binders are like folders. And so if you're gonna plan a flight, you might, you might create a binder and add the instrument approaches that you would expect you might be assigned uh, or that you expect to request uh, for that flight. So you can pull them up uh, very quickly in flight. In order to do that, I can tap the binders button up at the top of the screen and I get a menu that slides out from the left-hand side. And there's two different types of binders. There's what we call other binders, which are just simple folders, uh, and you can add as many random procedures to a folder and as many folders as you like. Um, and that's always been in ForeFlight. That's, that's been there for a long time now. One of the more recent features, though, that we've introduced is something called flight binders. And flight binders are a little more intelligent. Flight binders allow you, will automatically pull in procedures for you based on the route that you've planned. And so I can add a flight binder for the flight that I just planned by selecting Add Flight Binder. And I get this menu and four flights says, hey, we noticed you're planning this route, uh, in this case from Rockford to Oshkosh, uh, and would you like to generate a flight binder with procedures for that route? And I'll say, yes, please, and I'll select that. And when I do that, ForeFlight will pre-fill any of the procedures that I had added in my flight plan to my binder. Um, it's organized based on departure airport procedures, and destination airport procedures. Let's say that I wanted to add an additional approach plate to my destination. Maybe I am expecting a certain approach or I'm gonna request one, and so I wanna make sure I have that ready to go. I can tap on the approach button for my, my destination, which is Oshkosh in this case, and I get a list of all the different approaches that are available. And again, your view will vary based on if you're an, uh, a US customer, European customer, Jefferson customer, what have you. I'm gonna select uh, one of the procedures here. I'll select the localizer DME backwards runway 18, and it will add it to my binder for me. And I, can, I know that it's added because I now have one of one um, total approaches added uh, to my approach category under Oshkosh. Of course, for different types of procedures, we can, we can do different types of uh, things to them. We can annotate them, that's what I'm showing here. So you can use that pencil button in the top right-hand corner to uh, make notes and highlights on a procedure. You'll notice in this case, uh, I'm a Pro Plus subscriber, and so I have a geo-referenced approach plate. I know it's geo-referenced because there's a blue box around the plan portion of the procedure. See that blue square that goes around the outside? That's the geo-referenced portion of the procedure. A common question we get is, why is the profile view on the procedure not geo-referenced? Why can't I see my airplane there as I, as I step down on the approach? And the answer is because the FAA does not always draw the, the profile view to scale. The, the, we, we, can't, we can't show you something that, that geo-reference is not drawn to scale. And so the plan view is always drawn to scale, and that's why you see your airplane there. Um, I mentioned the, the plates on maps feature earlier. We did that with a taxi diagram earlier. We can do it with an, with an instrument approach. I can tap that send to menu, send a map, and now I have that instrument approach visualized on top of the map. And I could go up to the top left, select different layers, charts, and visualize all that information in one view. Um, back on the, uh, the flight binder, uh, let's say I wanted to add a taxi diagram to my binder. I'll select the airport category under my destination, Oshkosh, and I'll select a diagram. In this case, I'm selecting the four flight diagram. Common question we get, why, what are the four flight diagrams? What's the difference between that and FAA taxi diagram, et cetera? Um, the short answer there is that the FAA does not make taxi diagrams for every airport in the US. And uh, we got a lot of requests from customers, hey, hey, I would love to have a taxi diagram for my home airport. And so we built up a team called the GIS team, and they used a bunch of survey data to create geo-referenced taxi diagrams for as many GA airports 
across the US as possible. If you don't have a taxi diagram available for your home airport, private field, public field, whatever, send us an email, team at fourflight.com, and we'll add it to our list and we'll get to it. Okay, moving on, documents. That's one to the right of plates along the bottom of the screen. When I open up the documents view, I have a bunch of binders, just like I did with plates, right? But these are binders full of documents. What's a document? Well, it's anything that's not necessarily like a published procedure. So it could be your POH, or it could be a PDF of a checklist, or maybe a local procedure that you wanna have handy. Um, it could be anything, really. Um, there are a couple different sections to the documents view. Up at the top, I have binders. These are, these are folders that I've created on my iPad or on my iPhone that hold documents. But I also have what are called drives, and you can think of drives as like cloud storage. And you can connect your own drives, whether you have a Dropbox account, et cetera, you can connect that to Foreflight. So everything you put in your cloud drives you will synchronize and show up automatically on your iPad. If you're interested in how that works, want to learn how to set up Dropbox or another provider to send documents directly to your iPad, stop by our booth and hang or see or send us an email. We can walk you through it. There's a bunch of drives that are available to all customers, though, by default. Um, one of the drives that uh, I think is most useful is the Foreflight drive. So I'm gonna go down to the Foreflight drive. This is available to everybody. And these are a bunch of documents that are published by Foreflight, things we think you might find useful that you can download to your device and have with you. One of them is the Pilot's Guide. That's the first option here. The Pilot's Guide is like the manual to Foreflight. There's one chapter for every feature. Uh, you can have that downloaded on your device, have it with you when you fly if you like. In order to download a, any document in the Documents tab, I can tap the blue button. It'll download that document directly to my device. I know it's downloaded now because I have a green check mark and I have a preview of what that document looks like and I can tap on that document and it will open it up in full screen. Um, I want to talk about another drive that's available to all US customers. That's the FAA drive. All the documentation that you might find on FAA.gov is actually available directly in Foreplate, so you don't have to go anywhere else. So chart supplements, uh, the FARs, the fly charts, the Class B graphics, all that stuff is available directly in the application. Uh, and I can download a category of those documents by tapping on them, uh, and they will download. So I can select, for example, chart supplement, download all the chart supplements, here they are on my device. It's that simple. Weather imagery. Imagery is one tab to the right of documents along the bottom of the screen. This is a bunch of weather imagery for the whole, the whole world, really. Uh, and it's organized as sort of an upside down triangle. So this left hand column here starts with really broad uh, weather imagery. Imagery that, that covers a large geographic region. As I move down the list to different categories, the imagery becomes more specific to smaller and smaller areas. And so we're looking at um, what we call featured right now, which are some of the most commonly uh, used weather imagery. Um, uh, but I could select prog charts, for example, if I wanted to pull up a prog chart. And here's all the latest prog charts. And I can select surface analysis, and I can open it up in full screen. And at the bottom of the screen are some arrows, a left arrow and a right arrow. And I can tap on those arrows to move forward or backward in forecast valid times, so I can see how that, how that prog chart is changing over the forecast periods, which is really handy. Filing and briefing. Foreflight has the ability to file and get weather briefings for both VFR and IFR flight plans. And you can do this under the flights view. The flights view is one tab to the right of imagery along the bottom of the screen. When you open up the flights view, you'll see a flight planning form. This is all the same information we entered on the maps view, like our aircraft, our performance, our route, our ETD, et cetera but in a form instead of like a visual map. Um, I want to highlight though that if, you, if we've planned a flight already, you don't have to fill in another flight plan form just to file it. Let's say, back here on the map, let's say we, that we had planned this route and now I wanna get a weather briefing or I wanna file it. Here's our friend, the send to menu right here, that little box with that arrow coming out. Remember, wherever you see that icon, that's saying, hey, this thing you're doing you can take this and, and put it somewhere else, visualize it somewhere else, send it somewhere else. And so I'm gonna select the send to menu and I'm gonna say send to flights. And when I do that, Foreflight will take that flight plan, it'll make a new entry for me right here, it'll pre-fill all my flight planning information for me so that all I have to do is tap proceed to file to file the flight plan. You can uh, review this information that's been, that's been sent over. You can see the flight here on the left-hand side as well as 
an overview of distance, time and route, ETA, total fuel, average headwind or tailwind across the route that you're planning. Make sure your departure destination is filled in. You can enter an alternate here. If you enter an, an IFR alternate, it, uh, ForeFlight will take that alternate into account when it's planning time and fuel calculations for you. Aircraft, again, the tail number and the performance characteristics of the airplane. You can scroll down here, we see a preview of the route that we had just planned. I can select that routes button to get the, the route advisor, see optimized routing if I want. A little bit further down, there's a payload section, so we can add people, cargo, different aircraft items that will change our weight and balance, obviously, as we fly, so I can make sure that that's all set up correctly. And I can get a briefing. So here's the briefing button up at the top of the screen, and we get a weather briefing. The weather briefing uh, is available offline, so as long as you've downloaded it before you go, It'll be here when you're flying around, even if you don't have an internet connection. A common question we get is, um, if there's ever a question about whether I received a briefing, can ForeFlight answer that? And the answer is yes, we make a uh, record of every briefing that's ever been generated, and if there's ever a question of, if you ever wanna get your briefing that you got you know, a month or two ago or whenever, just send us an email, team at foreflight.com. We'll give you not just the record of the briefing, we'll give you the briefing itself. We save every briefing, so um, no, no problem there. Uh, I'm gonna go back, close the briefing, and now I'm gonna file my flight plan. So I'm gonna tap proceed to file. I get what's called the ICAO flight plan form. This is the standard ICAO form for uh, filing, and we've pre-filled all the information for you based on the calculations that were done for your flight plan, and I can tap the file button, and off it goes. If you file VFR, it goes to flight service. If you file IFR, it goes off to what's called ERAM, which is the air traffic control uh, computer system. As you're filing IFR in ForeFlight, there's a bunch of benefits. You'll get what are called expected route notifications. So when the system goes into ERAM, uh, ERAM says, yep, this route looks good, or no, this is not, this is not gonna work, and it generates a new route for you. We'll actually send you that expected route back to your device, so when you call up clearance, you already have the expected route uh, written down and planned before they give it to you over the radio. That is not a clearance, it's your expected and so it's just a way to save you a little time and give you a little heads up. And that's on the third recording, just, just the first one. What I'm talking about right now is available to anyone, uh, expected clearances, anyone who's filing IFR and ForeFlight. If you want a pre-departure clearance, which is a real clearance, you need to be on the Performance Plus subscription and filing from an airport that has PDC enabled. And there's only about, I think, 70-ish airports nationwide that uh, support PDC. Scratch pads. Scratch pads is one to the right of flights along the bottom of the screen. Scratch pad is very simple. It's just a way to take notes on your iPad screen. So I can add a new scratch pad. Uh, one of my favorites is the ATIS. This is just a template, an ATIS template in the order you can expect to hear information about the ATIS, ATIS over the radio. Fill it in with a stylus or with your finger. Downloads. Okay, if there is one thing, this whole presentation, that I'd like you to take away, it's this section, it's downloads. It's so important that you download all the information you need for your route before you go flying, because you're probably not gonna have internet connection in flight, or if you do, it's gonna be real spotty. Uh, and so it's super important to have everything you need before you go. And we do that in the downloads view in ForeFlight. And that's this bottom tab here, the more menu. And in that menu, I can select downloads up at the top of the screen. When I open up this menu, this is showing me the stuff that I've downloaded, but up at the top of the screen, there are two buttons. One says data settings, one says region settings. Data settings, if you tap on data settings, this tells ForeFlight the types of stuff you want. And by types of stuff, I mean like the type of chart, the specific type of content. Maybe you're uh, just a VFR pilot, so you want VFR charts and taxi diagrams, and so you would turn those on in that view. If you're flying IFR, maybe you want instrument approaches, SID stars, et cetera, you would turn those on. So data settings is the types of stuff you want. Region settings is where you want that stuff for. So we tell ForeFlight what we want, and under region settings, the areas we want it for. One of the reasons we have the pack feature is because it can analyze the route for you automatically that you've planned and download things that you need. But you still need to go into data settings to tell ForeFlight the types of stuff you care about, the stuff that's important to you. There's a lot more in ForeFlight Mobile. Uh, Track logs is the ability to record your flights, replay them uh, in 2D, or if you're on performance, in 3D uh, after the flight, really handy. 
logbook, if you're flying with four flight, it can track your takeoffs and landings, time, daytime, nighttime, et cetera, um, automatically update your currencies for you. Alerting has been a big theme for us lately. So different types of alerts in four flight mobile, um, aircraft on runway alerts, airspace alerts, TFR alerts, terrain and obstacle alerts, tons of different alerts available in the application. Glide advisor, a really handy feature. You can enter your aircraft's glide performance, your glide ratio, and ForeFlight will show you a green blob uh, around your aircraft, and this blob will morph and change based on the winds aloft, as well as based on your GPS altitude and terrain or obstacles around you. This is essentially showing you your available gliding distance based on your GPS altitude and position if you were to lose an engine at that point. And that you, that'll just follow your airplane as long as you have it on. Hazard Advisor shows you terrain and obstacles uh, top down on the map. And uh, similar to Glide Advisor, this, this view will morph and change. As you climb and descend, you'll see more terrain and obstacles around you. It can proactively notify you uh, if you're coming up on a specific uh, area of terrain or an obstacle. Synthetic Vision, this is available in our Pro Plus and above. So this is a view showing synthetic vision in a split screen with uh, our uh, Glide Advisor plus some alerts. So lots of stuff going on here. but. Synthetic vision is just a 3D view out the window. If you have a Sentry device, our ADSB device, that has an attitude heading and reference system in it that will automatically drive the pigeon bank for synthetic vision. There's a profile view available in the flight plan uh, menu we were looking at. Uh, the profile view will show you airspace, terrain, and obstacles along the side for your route that you've planned, and so you can see what altitude you need to be at to make it over or under a certain airspace or terrain. Um, and you can also put this into an in-flight mode so it'll just track your ground track and just show you stuff ahead of the aircraft as you're flying. I mentioned uh, 3D visualization, tons of 3D features in ForeFlight. This is 3D route preview, so that route that we had planned, I can actually visualize that in 3D uh, and virtually fly it before I go. Apple Watch, we announced Apple Watch at Oshkosh last year. ForeFlight's now available for, for Apple Watch. Uh, in order to get it on your Apple Watch, all you need is an Apple Watch, obviously, uh, and ForeFlight Mobile running on an iPhone. And as long as you have your iPhone connected to your watch, it'll install the ForeFlight Mobile uh, application for watch. The watch app is really great. It'll show you uh, nearby airport weather information, weather uh, airport, airport frequencies, um, tons of useful information that you can kind of see at a glance on your wrist. Okay, so how to learn more. Pilot's Guide, that's the, that's the manual, right? You can download that on our website or go into the Documents tab we just looked at and have it with you on your iPad when you fly. Check out our blog, blog.forflight.com, for the latest news. Uh, we've always got tons of new stuff coming out every month. Um, and speaking of, of new stuff coming out every month, forflight.com slash releases, that's a page that shows you every release that we've made and all the major features in that release. And you can click on that and watch the videos about every single feature for every release. We release every month, and we have done that for years and years and years, something we, we pride ourselves on. So lots of stuff to check out on that page. Forflight.com slash videos, I mentioned this course, all of our courses are available to watch for free uh, online. Again, we're here all week in Hangar C, and don't forget about that wings credit, uh, bit.ly slash wings credit. Thank you so much for coming. I hope that was useful. I hope you learned something. Um, I have, uh, we got about five or 10 minutes for anyone who has questions. Yes, sir. Yeah, so the question is, does ForeFlight run on Android or wh will it ever run on Android? And we have no plans for Android right now. We're committed to iOS. Um, from a quality assurance pers perspective, it, 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 it's the right decision for us. It allows us to write one standard code base that deploys to all iOS devices, all iPads, all iPhones. Um, the fragmentation in the Android ecosystem makes that a bit more challenging. And so we're committed to iOS right now. Yes, ma'am, in the back. Yeah, Glide Advisor. Let me um, switch over to my iPad here, and uh, let's see if we can get this going. Um, there we go. Glide Advisor. What I, in order to enable Glide Advisor, uh, you have to set it up first. You can do that under Settings, uh, and then if I scroll down here, there is an option for Glide Advisor right here. This guy. And uh, you can enable Glide Advisor, and you can give it your best glide speed and your aircraft's glide ratio. And as long as you give it those two pieces of information, you'll get that green blob that'll morph and change as you fly. Other questions? Yes, sir. Actually, on that point, so uh, are you taking any live data from any kind of a system to actually calculate what that is? Uh, the wind specifically? 
Yeah, so, so the, the wind data that it will use will be the latest forecast wind that was downloaded. Um, it also takes into account your GPS altitude, ground speed, as well as ter the terrain and obstacle database. But the wind data is the forecast data. Totally, yeah. Glide Advisor works exclusively on forecast wind data right now. Other questions? Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, so the question is, um, when I'm filing, when I'm planning in advance, how many days out of winds data does it have? And I believe the current is seven days. It'll look seven days out. Yeah. Beyond seven days, um, we use a historical wind forecast model. Um, and then I think it's beyond 10 or 30. I would have to check on the website, honestly. It'll use zero winds at, at a certain point. But uh, seven, to, seven to 10 days, it's using a forecast model and then defaulting to historical wind trends. Other questions? Yes, sir. Yep, so the question is, we were looking at procedure advisor, and let me open up my flight plan here, and I'm gonna put a route in here. And the question is, if I enter, let me put one more uh, airport in. So now I have three airports in my route, right? So Lakeland to Oshkosh to Ann Arbor. When I go into procedure advisor, I can only add procedures for my departure and my destination, right? My final destination. We don't currently allow you the ability to add procedures for any interstitial waypoints that are along the route. Very, very handy Cool. If there's no more questions, we're going to be in Hangar C all week. Please stop by and say hi. Thank you.